What's up guys, Matt Farah here. Welcome to part two of our Palm Beach Supercar Weekend special right here in Palm Beach, Florida. Today in this episode, we're gonna talk to one of our favorite people here on Garage 419, Jim Glickenhaus, about his newest acquisition to his continually expanding collection, the Dino Competizione prototype by Pininfarina. And we're dedicating this entire episode to a beautiful 40-year-old one-owner car. Stick around. Last year at Palm Beach Supercar Weekend, we spent a full episode on the P45. It actually is, is still in our top 10 most viewed episodes of all time. And this year we've got it's Jim. It's the Paris Hilton of cars. It is, thing, really. You know? And we've got Jim Glickenhaus back on the program. Good to have you again. Good to Jim. be here. I know. I always love having him on the program. Tell me about your new vehicle. This is Dino Competizione. It's also known as the Yellow Dino. Uh, it's a very famous car. It was designed by Panin Freen in 1967 as a show car. It began as a Ferrari race car, a 206S. Uh -huh. Its motor ran at Le Mans. And then in 67, Ferrari gave it to Panin Freena, who built the Yellow Dino with the wings. And it was at the uh, Frankfurt Show and Geneva and has been in the collection of the Panin Frina family uh, since it was built. And about a year ago, uh, I bought it from Andrea Panin Frina and Panin Frina. So is, is this actually now a one owner car and you're the one it's owner? It's a one owner car. I'm the first owner of a 40 year old car. That's unbelievable. Um, I uh, took delivery of it and then I drove it on the Targa Florio and brought it back to them and just had them do a few minor things. Uh, That's to why make I it. love the guy, because he, he buys a prototype 40 year old car and goes out and races it. That's great. Absolutely. and, and it's. It's an important car for another reason. I think if you go to a lot of events like Pebble Beach or Cavallino and you see restored cars, they're beautiful and, and whatnot, but I think people have lost sight of what a real original 40-year-old car looks like. Yeah. And it's very crude. I mean, it's not even side to side. The paint is beautiful, but it's not, you can't see your reflection in it. Yeah. The chrome is cool, but it's not so polished that it shines like a, a shining sun. Yeah. And I think that you get a sense of how crude and wonderful these cars were. The name, the name Dino, uh, as it applies to this car, how does that relate to the production Dino? Well, a uh, Dino Ferrari, of course, was Enzo's son right. and he was a very talented engineer and unfortunately he got leukemia at a very young age and died and this was really a major event in Enzo's life I mean Enzo loved his son he went to his um, mausoleum every day of mm -hmm. his life and I don't think he ever fully recovered from losing his son and he named a series of cars after his son, the Dinos. The Dinos were not 12 cylinders, they were six cylinders. Uh, well, and they the, inspired, the, the production Dinos inspired the 308s and the 328s and the 355s. I mean, it, you can see the progression right down the line with those cars. No question about it. Now, the thing in sports car racing in 1967, there were two classes. There was the four liter class of prototypes, which my P34 and mm -hmm. the P4s ran in. And the four, and, the four G as well. Yeah, well, well the, the four GTs were pure prototypes. It was up to seven liters. Okay. And then there was a two liter class, which uh, Porsches ran in and Dinos ran in. So there was the 206S. Okay. Two stood for two liters, six, six cylinders. cylinders. Yeah. So, and that actually sort of continues in the, in the Ferrari. It absolutely does. Today. I mean, that's why I named that 612 P45 because six it's six liter, 12 cylinder. Right. Exactly. Does this car have prototype roots? As as it applies to production Dinos, is this, no, this is no, so this is a no. a, a different car entirely. No, no, a totally different car, a show car. The engine is longitudinal. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, Let's still yeah. talk about the engine in the engine bay. But it has these wonderful gullwing doors. You know what I really like is how similar the the greenhouse setup is to this and the P45. Well, that was the whole point. I mean, when I went to Andre and Panin Freen and said I wanted to do P45. To me, this is a sister. Yeah. I mean, this she is a sister of P45, and everything that came from the beautiful, curvaceous Ferrari designs really was in the 60s. I mean, the thing in the 60s was they felt that it looked like Gino Lola Bridget it would be fast. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it wasn't fast. I mean, the, the wedgy shapes are much faster, but they're not particularly good looking. Yeah. So the beautiful curves, which I also put back in P45, uh, was something. So this is her sister, for sure. It's definitely, let's see the, the longitudinal engine because yeah, yeah. that's not what you would normally see in a Dino. Yeah. 
the engine is really far forward in this, which is. Yeah, and I see this is a lot. This is a, a Dino type race motor. It has 12 spark plugs, dual spark plugs. It has a really cool transmission. It's very similar to a Formula One transmission with inboard disc brakes. The brakes are on the on the inside of the axle there. Now the reason they did that was the idea was it would take weight, unsprung weight. There are two types of yeah. car weight in cars. Weight that is on the springs and shocks and weight that is on the wheel. And you want to get as much off of the wheel onto the springs and shocks yeah. as you can. But the problem is if you located the disc brakes inboard, unfortunately they were close to the engine, close to the gearbox, and they heated up. Mm -hmm. And the thing about brakes are they are simply a device to turn kinetic energy into heat. Yeah. So the hotter they are, the less efficient they are. Okay, so how did they solve the problem? Well, they basically found that it didn't work and they went and put the brakes <laughs> oh. um, on it, so, on the outside. But, in, but, but for this one car, I mean, the brakes work fine, Well, right? for, oh, they work fine, and for the uh, competition Dinos, they were all like this. Oh, okay. Yeah. How many miles you got on this bad boy? Uh, about 5,000. Yeah. It's like a... Uh, 35. Oh, of course, it, it does get driven. Yeah, we like to drive. That's key. Garage419.com. Be there. This is a real piece of history, and I didn't want to molest it in any way. So, to make it more streetable, I wanted to put on an air filter rather than the open velocity stacks to suck in oh, that. Oh, so that originally just had open carbs. Right yes, there. Okay. but well, everything we did was obvious and can be unbolted. Yeah. So, what I did is I said, look, when people look at this, that is not original, but you undo those bolts, you undo that, yeah. and it comes off and, and it's, it's back. And it's actually got a vintage look to it. It's oh, not, well, look, it was made know, by Panin Frias. Right. So. If you told me that was original, I wouldn't question it for a second. Look, the entire restoration, which really wasn't a restoration, it was a cleaning up and getting it back together, was done by Panin Frias. So the same yeah. guys that built the car, restored it as it were, and um, did the very slight modifications so to make it safe. Because they did it, that could actually be counted as original equipment. Oh, for sure, because you know, interestingly enough, I did not take delivery until it was done. Okay. So I think you could argue, quite oh, so honestly, then that is original this equipment. is original yeah, equipment, there you go. for sure, that this I, is as the car was delivered. You told me that you actually have the original tires with the original air in them. I do, we have those. Uh, I don't put them on the car to drive they're them around. They're probably very unsafe. Yeah, they're very. They're they're like as hard as the tarmac. Yeah, is, this, is that spare one? Them, no, the the spares and the wheels and tires that are on it now we remade so they'd be safe. We have the original wheels yeah. and tires and spares locked up somewhere. Yeah, they're, they're hanging on the wall. You know. So what about the the aerodynamic stuff on this car? It it almost looks like an afterthought, like the like the wing on well, the front. Well, here's and the, the here's here's thing. the thing. Aerodynamics was just beginning to be understood in the 60s. Mm -hmm. It was something that heretofore they made them look sexy and they thought they would be fast. Ford came along in 67 and said, you know, we can use this wind tunnel and maybe we're going to learn that things aren't what you think. Yeah. And so people started thinking, well, what about wings? So this was sort of a statement like in the future cars will have wings yeah. and on a show car. Interestingly enough, we put Dino Competizione in the Panin Frina wind tunnel. We were just curious about it. Um, and it has, it's as <laughs> aerodynamic <laughs> as a nice truck. <laughs> <laughs> would, it, the, would it actually be better if the wings were not on it at yes. all? Yes. Uh, the wings, interestingly enough. All you enough, ricers take note. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, you can actually crank downforce into the rear. The problem is you lift the nose off the ground. Yeah. So we had to take basically all the angle of the wing out. And of course, they create drag, so they slow it up. But they do look cool, and you know, oh, yeah. and that's a well, part it of it too. It definitely stands out. Now, as far as the interior goes, obviously minimal is minimal is the is the name of the game here. The steering wheel is so cool. Yeah, the steering wheel is from a Mercedes 300 SL, and the idea is that you can you can do it, and then it makes it a lot yeah, easier to get that. in there. Yeah. Yeah, because I mean, what are you? You're, you're six two or something. There's no way you're getting yeah. in that car otherwise. We did do one one or two very minor cheats to make me able to drive. Panin Farina made this interior, which is a duplicate of the original, but it has Formula One foam. It's very thin, so I got a little bit more headroom, and we did things like that, but it can all be put back. This shifter is very cool. It's sequential. It's designed so that you can't mechanically over rev it, meaning if you're in fifth, uh -huh. you can't shift a second, downshift. You can it's only shift to four. No, no, the gate won't let you do it. Oh, really? So you have to go fifth, fourth, third, oh. second. Are they so, straight cut gears? Are they, are they uh, yeah, the, the gear is, a, is dog 
dog deer is their straight yeah. cut. Yeah, it's a crash box, but it's, it's drivable. It's, yeah. uh, you just have to be... Yeah, a little muscle in there. Yeah, a little it. muscle and you get it, and match the shifts. Now, as far as performance goes, I mean, what kind of horsepower does this thing Well, make? this thing weighs nothing. It weighs 1,500 pounds, so it has 210 horsepower. So it's 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 pretty quick. You know, it's probably, it's probably quick, probably handles great. Oh, it handles very well. Yeah, yeah I took it on the Targa and the Twisting Roads. It was great. Yeah. Um, drove in downtown traffic and Palermo and stuff. And, uh, and as far as drivability, it's... Totally you know, drivable. Like any other vintage car. Any, but... any other vintage car. But it's... Uh, there's very good visibility. The windshield wiper works. Um, what about ventilation? I mean, these windows do not open. Well, we, they, they do. Oh, they the do? windows the windows come down. Oh, look how cool that is. And then we actually... Panin, That's awesome. Panin Freena made for us a set of scoops that go in here and are held in by the window. So when you drive... It just really funnels it right into the Yeah, it funnels... Is this Lexan? Yes, is this glass? is yeah, okay. plexiglass. And then the other thing that we did is w there are scoops up here in the nose uh -huh. underneath. You see them? Yeah, yeah. And they go into the cockpit, and there's a very high-pressure fan that brings in. So there's oh. a lot of ventilation. It's not a problem. That's great, though. Yeah, yeah. It's really cool. It's a piece of history that I'm lucky enough to be uh, able to have and yeah. you know pass on to my children. Hey, Joseph, how are you? You uh, are you going to go for the trophy this year at Pebble? This one? Uh, no, I'm going to I'm going to take it to Quail. Actually, to be honest with you, I. I I'm, as I get older, I'm less interested in trophies and judging and stuff. I just like to drive them. see people drive use them and just drive them. How many miles do you own P45? Oh, about 6,000. And um, do you, do you plan on driving this just as much? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That is this doesn't have an odometer, so I don't know how far it's going. That's the good news. Yeah. That's, that's actually, for your yeah. purposes, that's better. You just exactly. For, don't even think about it. It's interesting how small it is. And some other details like this is the gas tank. Oh, look how cool that is. That's sweet. That's, that's great. They really thought of some wild stuff, didn't they? Yeah, no, absolutely. They're, they were yeah. so much better at concealing things, you know, at making things kind of flush back then. That's so cool. But it's definitely a sister of P45. Yeah, and, you know, and this was the cooler. only one ever made, right? Only one ever yeah. made. That's great. It's amazing that, it, you, that it's a prototype, and yet you can get in it now, four years later, drive it, and say, yeah, you know, it drives good. This was actually the last show car that was drivable. Really? Modulo, which is a, probably one of the most famous Ferraris, it's that very angular-looking yeah, yeah, one, yeah, yeah. you know, um, it is not a functioning car. Oh, okay. So this was the last uh, of the Ferrari Super Show cars that was functioning, totally functioning as a car. Amazing, amazing car, Jim. Thanks so much. Oh, Always pleasure, good to see man. you down Great here, to man. See you. This one, we're gonna we're gonna try and beat the P45 episode in terms of traffic with this one. Well, you know, it's uh, you have to aspire to something. Yeah. <laughs> Jim Glickenhaus, the Dino Competizione prototype. Forty years later, still looking good. Next time on Garage 419, we're going to talk about this car right here, the Dino 206 Berlinetta Competizione, one of one prototype for the Ferrari Dino, owned by the one and only Mr. Jim Glickenhaus, who's going to tell us all about it, as well as why he updated it and converted it so he could drive it on the street.